Umetokoa na kutuisha Umetuganga na kutulisha Wati miliza mambo yetu Bwana Watu sambe Watu oko watu Na tuise tu Wadili sako Bwana Nizamilele Mateno yako kwetu Ni maku Fadili zako bwana Niza milele Mateno yako kwetu Ni maku Ni nema yako tu Ni kusuli lako Ibidili nyondi sababu yako Ni nema yako tu Ni kusuli lako Angalia tulipotoka Tulipotoka Mimbali Umetuzingi la pande zote Kono wako umetutoa mahali Si salama Let's go just Wana asifiwe We want to take this opportunity to welcome you all in this service You feel most welcome as we fellowship together Afterwards I will I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Your old people will have dreams, and your young people will see visions. At that time, I will pour out my spirit, even on servants, both men and women. Prison worship, let's continue. Today. Hallelujah. Let's sing together. Oh man, but 
you are the most I go. There is none like you. Oh, the other God, they are the works of men, but you are the most I go. There is none like you. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Your good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Oh, so good, your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, your good, your grace is forever. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, your good, your favor is forever. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. We worship you this morning. Thank you because of your goodness. Your faith when we love you this day, Lord. Indeed, there is none like you. We say the Lord, you are Alpha and Omega. Receive all the glory and honor this morning. Your faithful Lord. We love you, Lord. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are We 
bow to all. Jesus, we love you this morning. You are indeed God of wonders. There is none like you. Thank you, present worship team, and also Elder James, for the far that you have gone. Uh, kindly those who are getting in. More species are there up. Let's have our word that's going to come from the book of Acts, chapter number 1, uh, from verse 1 to 11. I'm Rusi Boro, and I'm saved. God. Uh, our second reading comes from the book of uh, Galatians, uh, chapter 5, uh, from verse 13. I was taking you through. Uh, my name is John William Nawakamau. Christ is the Lord of my soul. Thank you, Darusa and uh, John, for that session. Uh, we now get the request we all stand up and we request the choir to give us a number as we prepare our hearts to hear the word of God. Kaidre, stand up for we, so the choir may read us with a number. Choir, please. Our 
Father and our God in the name of Jesus as we come into your presence this morning with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts, O oh God, we bow before your throne. We have made a confession that, Lord, we wish to trust and obey you so that we can walk with you, O oh God. And we wish to repent and turn away from the moments that, Lord, we have not walked faithfully before you. We ask that our Father, you forgive us. And this morning, as you speak to us in your word, help us to hear it, help us to trust it, so that, Lord, we can walk with you. And when we walk with you, Lord, we shall fear nothing. We shall worry about nothing. We will be confident of you, O oh God, that we are able, O oh God, to do that which your Father invited us to be, O oh God. So we trust you this morning. Father, as I stand in this congregation, I pray for grace. I pray that, Lord, your Spirit will use me, O oh God, as thou shalt choose, O oh God. We give you thanks. Open our hearts and our minds to hear and to receive your word. Father, we stand opposed to every scheme of the enemy against the hearing of your word. The Bible says that the entry of your word brings light. We pray that this morning there shall be light in our lives in the name of the Lord. And that, Lord, every darkness that the enemy has brought this morning, O oh God, we pray that we shall overcome it to the praise of your glorious name. Father, we abide with you. We wait on you. Speak to us and bless us. We give thanks and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May we have our seats. Buana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. You know, it's a bit cold and uh, it is not right that we also feel cold and look like we are also feeling cold right inside our hearts. So I wish to encourage us to to encourage ourselves in the Lord so that we can be a bit warm even as we hear the word of the Lord. My name is Augustine Geto Gawanyaga. Christ is Lord. He has saved me and kept me safe. I, I really thank God. There, there is nothing about me uh, in my being here. There is nothing about me that makes me stand here or be anything. I acknowledge the grace, the love, and the favor of God. It is by grace that we are saved, not by our works, so that none of us has anything to boast. But we all bow before God and worship him and give him thanks. We want to thank God for giving us yet another opportunity to come and gather together to hear the word of the Lord. We realize that coming to church is not normal. Praise the name of the Lord. Kwa sababu tumepata nafasi ambayo hatukuwa tunakuja kanisani. So now we know that coming to church is not normal. Hallelujah. So you are among very few people who do things that are not normal. Praise the name of the Lord. Coming to church is not normal. In fact, as you came today, there probably are more people who are not in church this morning in this neighborhood than those who are in church here. Praise the Lord. So it is not normal to come to the place where we worship God. But we want to thank God for all of us that have heard the voice because it is the Lord who invites us. It is the Lord who calls us. And so we want to thank God for those of us who heard the voice that called us to come and also obeyed and actually came because there are still many who heard the voice but ignored it. Wakasikia, wakalenga. Wakasema hiyo siyo yao. Wakona shuguli zingine muhimu. Kushida kuja kuwa katika nyuba ya buwana. But this is the place where we come and we meet with the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And it is our prayer and our desire that going forward, this place will remain open for us to come and meet with the Lord. You may say that you can meet with the Lord out there in the house and everywhere, but it is in the plan and the purpose of God to have a place that is set aside for his name. Praise the Lord. It is God's intention that though we can meet him anywhere, on the streets, in our houses, wherever we work, God is there. But he has ordained a place that is called by his name. So that those who forget about him, as they pass on the road and they see this place, they remember. 
there is a God. Hallelujah. And he is to be worshipped. So we have not built this house so that God can come and dwell here. Or so that we can only come here and meet with him. But it is a witness and a testimony to the world that there is a God who is worshipped. Because there are many people who forget. The ones we have said who ignore the voice of God. I assure you that as they pass on that road and see this building, the Lord reminds them there is a God who is worshipped. And he invites them to come and worship. I want to thank God for this day. Uh, we have read a few scriptures. Now, in our Christian church calendar, we celebrate Christmas. And uh, Christmas, we all know that it is the time that we assume that Jesus was born. It may not have been those very specific days. But it is a good thing that happened because it makes the whole world stop and remember that there was a savior who was born so that the world is without excuse nobody out there can say we do not know that a savior was born so in Christmas time we remember that a savior was born and then sometime around March April the Israelites celebrate Passover. From the times of Moses, they have kept that tradition. So it is not a fluke. It is not something that is assumed. You know, there are so many things about us and our worship and our coming to church that we so wonder whether it really happened, whether it is true. And all those questions that sometimes cross through our minds. But throughout the history of the world, the nation of Israel continues to celebrate Passover around March, April. And so around that Passover, the Bible tells us that that Savior whose birth we celebrate over Christmas, he was crucified on a cross. So it is actually true that Jesus was actually crucified on a cross. And I want to thank God. The Bible says he is the sacrifice given once for all. That is why today, we do not need to offer goats and drums and, and birds and all those other sacrifices that people make so that their lives can change. Because there is one sacrifice that was offered once for all. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the Bible tells us that the blood of goats and cows and oxes is not enough. The blood of oxen is not enough to have our sins forgiven. But there is one who had no sin who was offered so that all sin can be forgiven. Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Buona Sifiwe. So we know that around that March, April season, we celebrate Easter. And we know that it is true that that happened. That Jesus actually died on the cross for our sins. But it happens that most of our Christian ceremonies that we celebrate majorly end there. We have Christmas and we have Easter and then we wait for the next Christmas. Praise the Lord. But it is important that we know that there are other seasons and other celebrations that take place in the Christian church. One of those celebrations is we have read the book of Acts, chapter 1. And we have read a story that we know about how Jesus was lifted up and he went to heaven. So in the Christian church calendar, there is a day called the day of ascension. The day when Jesus ascended to heaven. It is the day of ascension. And that day takes place 40 days after Easter. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So after Easter, 40 days, because the Bible we have read, it has said that Jesus appeared severally to the disciples and the believers and to so many other people who saw him for a period of 40 days. And then on this 40th day, the Bible gives us a story where he is discussing something with the disciples and reminding them of the promises of God. And the Bible says that as he was talking to them, he was lifted up and a cloud hid them and he went to heaven. That is the day of ascension, 40 days after Easter. And so 40 days after Easter was last week, Thursday. Praise the Lord. Buenas if you. How many of you celebrated ascension? How many of you knew that something like that happens? Hallelujah. Buenas if you. So, always remember, 40 days after Easter, it is the day of ascension. Now, we read, uh, those who came in later, we read from the book of Joel, the call to worship was from the book of Joel chapter 2 in verse 28 and 29. The Bible says that in the later days, the Lord says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's what the word of God says. Thank you for the scriptures. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see vision. Verse 29, if you give it to us, and also on my men servant and on my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days. That is the promise that God spoke to generations to come through the prophet of God, Joel. And so when Jesus is being taken up, the scenario where we read, uh, where we read Acts chapter two, uh, chapter one. Jesus knows that he is being taken up, and he talks to the disciples and tells them to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, the promise that Joel had received. So in Acts, the Bible, uh, Jesus tells them. On one occasion when he is talking to them and eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard from me. The next verse says, For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So that is 40 days when he is preparing to ascend. He tells them not many days from now, John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Because that is the promise of God. And if you read the book, uh, the book of Acts chapter 2, we will not go there. But when the Spirit comes on the day of Pentecost, Peter quotes the same scripture in Joel chapter 2. When he is telling people what is happening and why they are babbling in tongues and why there is a hulabaloo in Jerusalem, he remembers the promise of God in it uh, to Joel, and he says, this is the promise that God gave us. It is ours and for generations to come. Praise the name of the Lord. So there is a promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus tells them to wait for the coming of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so in a brief way this morning, I want us to just meditate on our walk in the power of God. We read in Galatians where we shall be going shortly. The Bible says walk in step with the Holy Spirit. And this is what I would wish and the Lord would wish for us to take home. Walking in step with the Spirit. So Jesus promises the apostles. Do not leave Jerusalem until you have been given the power to be my witnesses in all Judea and Jerusalem and everywhere as he had promised them in Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. So we come to today and that is why I was laying that background. So after 40 days, the day of ascension. Then there came 
the day of Pentecost. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, Pentecost was a celebration that took place 50 days after Passover. That is why it is Pente. 50. Pentecost. It was a celebration by the people of Israel 50 days after the Passover. And so it happens that on that day of that celebration, as they were gathered, it happens to be 10 days after Jesus had been lifted up. But the Bible says that they continued to gather every day. So after Jesus was taken up from their midst, the following days, the Bible says they used to meet every day. And so as they met every day to encourage one another and to pray together, this one time, the 10th day, the day of Pentecost, they were still meeting and praying together. And it is at that point that the pouring out of the Holy Spirit that happened. Buana Sifiwe. I said the day of ascension was last week, Thursday. If you count from last week, Thursday, to today, it is 10 days. Praise the name of the Lord. So today is the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know how many of us have wondered and have been missing to have a Pentecost experience. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know how many of us wonder and hope and wish that we can still have a day of Pentecost. That is a longing I always have in my heart. That we can always have a day of Pentecost. And it can be every day. And so the Lord has given us an opportunity today to come and celebrate Pentecost. And we can open our hearts to the Lord. We can open our lives to the Lord. And tell him we would love to have a Pentecost experience. Because the promise of Joel, according to the book of Acts, where Peter speaks to the people, uh, to, uh, to the people that were watching them and listening. When, the, when Pentecost came, Peter spoke to them. And he told them that that promise that was given by the Lord was for theirs, uh, if you just share with us the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 17. Just give us chapter 2 of Acts, verse 17, so that we can walk together. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass. This is now Peter telling the people what, I, what is happening among them. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Verse 18. And on my men servant and maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. Verse 19. And I will show wonders in heaven above signs in the earth and beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Let's keep going. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. We keep going. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The next. So Peter explains to them what is happening to them and he reminds them that that promise that was given to Joel, that whole scripture is actually in the book of Joel. And so Peter tells them that that promise that was given was for them and their children and their children's children. So today, we happen to be the children that are receiving this promise. So what I wish to say is that that promise was not just made for the apostles. It was given to us so that we too can walk in the Spirit of God. Now, there is something interesting about walking in the Spirit. The Bible gives us a picture of Peter. And I would like us to have that picture in our minds. Before this day of Pentecost, Peter was a good brother. He loved the Lord. You know, Jesus had called him as a disciple among the twelve. He had heard the voice and he had come. 
and he had followed the Lord. He had walked with him. And one day Jesus was talking to them and he asked, who do you people say I am? And Peter, who loved the Lord, stood up quickly and said, you are the Christ, the one sent from God. And Jesus told him, not man has revealed this to you, but the Holy Spirit. So Peter was a good brother who believed God and who walked in the ways of God. And so, the next time, Jesus also talks to them again, and he tells them that he will die, he will be crucified. And Peter stands again and says, that cannot happen. You know, the Peter who had the revelation of Christ being the son of God, when Jesus the next time says he will die and be crucified, Peter stands and says, no, that cannot happen. It shall not happen to you. And Peter was ready to defend Jesus so that he is not killed by anyone. And what did Jesus tell him? Get behind me, Satan. You have no share in the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus was not calling Peter Satan. Praise the name of the Lord. But he was just saying that Peter was blowing hot and cold. Sometimes he's so excited about what God is doing. Then other moments, something happens to him. He is lost in the world. And there are so many instances in our lives where we do such things. On Sunday, we are on fire for Jesus. We dress for Sunday. We have our Sunday best. If you could be told by anyone that we can walk topless on the streets, you cannot believe. Because on Sunday, we look good. We say all the right things. We actually come to church and we look good. But please do not wish to meet us on Wednesday evening because you will not recognize us. And that is what used to happen to Peter. One time he is excited, the other times he is wildly. The next time we see Peter is when Jesus comes to be arrested. This guy was a good brother. When Jesus is arrested, Peter is so angry. I don't know where he got a panga from. Buona Sifiwe. Do you remember that story? I have no idea where this guy had kept a panga. I don't know whether he used to walk with Jesus with a panga. And I don't know why he used to walk with Jesus with a panga. But for some reason, the guy had a panga. And he was so angry that anybody is daring to touch Jesus, he got his sword and chopped off his ear. He was actually aiming for the neck. Buona Sifiwe. But by the grace of God, he didn't get the neck. He got the ear. Hallelujah. And the Bible says the ear fell. But Jesus picked it up, fixed it up. And he told Peter, in this one, in this battle, in this war, we don't use pangas. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to speak to Christians this morning that we have a battle. Hallelujah. When you have a quarrel in your house with your spouse, it is a spiritual battle. Kindly stop using pangas. Praise the name of the Lord. Many of us are using pangas. Many of us are using other things. And we are causing harm in our lives. When we have a disagreement with our brothers and our sisters in our families, when we have disagreements in the marketplace, many of us are ready with pangas. Some may be physical pangas. Others have swords in the mouth. The words that come out of this mouth that sing for God on Sunday, you would not believe that that person had heard the word of God on Sunday. The things that come out of us. The things that come out of us in secret places. Some of us young men, when we hide with our phones, you will not believe it was the same good people seated in a church service because of the things they Google. Friends, it is a spiritual battle. And Jesus told Peter, he had to tap a panga. And so Jesus put back the ear. That same Peter, immediately after that, Jesus is arrested. And he is taken away. When he is taken away, Peter goes somewhere. You know, he is now following from afar. 
He doesn't want to draw too close. He maybe is afraid that he might be arrested. So he is following from afar. So he goes somewhere, sits down with the other people. And somebody recognizes him and says, this guy was with him. And he says, who? <laughs> Excuse me, who? <laughs> Uliniona. You know some of us are like that. We come to church on Sunday. But when we go out there and get an opportunity to do something else and somebody comes and says, Lakini swe unaendaka kanisa? Nani? You know, we deny Christ life life. Mchana. That was Peter for you. Sitting around a fire, a young girl sees him. And she remembers, I have seen this guy with Jesus, the one they have arrested. And she says, excited, you know. You know, hata hui walikuwa na ee. Nani? Praise the name of the Lord. That was Peter. Afraid of standing for the Lord. He denied the Lord. And even at that time, somebody else saw him and said, this guy was with him and he said, Nani? And then he heard, Coo, 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 coo. The Bible says, Peter bowed and cried. He remembered what he had been told. Praise the name of the Lord. And how many times in your life have you done things forgetting that you are a Christian but then at some point in your life something happens and you remember. I was supposed to be a believer. I wasn't supposed to say what I said. I wasn't supposed to do what I did. I am a believer. How many times have you had that cock crow in your life after you did, after you said what you did? That was Peter. But I want to thank God because there are many experiences that Peter went through. And then the Bible says that after Jesus rose and as he was meeting those people now for the 40 days we talked about, he met Peter who had told the disciples, Jesus is dead, he's no longer around, I'm going fishing. And how many times have you found yourself going fishing? Peter had gone fishing. And then Jesus appears and asks them, do you have something to eat? And he recognizes it is the Lord. And the Bible says that at that point, Jesus restored him. It is at that point that Jesus spoke to Peter and told him, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. And so the Lord restored him to faith. And as he restored him to faith, this is now where we meet them as he is ascending and promising them that the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit came, it was brother Peter. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The guy was on fire. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that the Spirit came like tongues of fire. And Peter was on fire. He gave a sermon. Nobody had had such a sermon before. But the people of Jerusalem who listened to Peter speak. The Bible says that after the speech of Peter, 3,000 souls came running to the Lord. Hallelujah. This is what the Spirit of God does. This is the power that the Spirit of God gives us. I want to say, that number one, one of the things that the Spirit of God gives us, it is boldness. It is courage. The same guy who had ran away and said, I do not know him. This time around, he was so courageous, he was ready to confront 3,000 men and tell them about the power of the saving grace of God. And so this morning, I wish to let you know, that today being the day of Pentecost, you can tell the Lord, I want the spirit of God that gives people courage. I want the spirit of God that makes people bold. So that when people are being corrupt in my place of work, I will tell them, I am born again. I don't give bribes. I don't receive bribes. Praise the name of the Lord. I know I can be poor. Because I don't have as much money as everybody else has. It is okay. I love the Lord. I am born again. I don't do it. 
they will laugh at you but you will be courageous to stand your ground because the spirit of God is on your life bonus if you are sana so the spirit of God is able to make us bold young men and women the spirit of God is able to make us courageous when people laugh at us because we go to church when people laugh at us because we don't talk the way they do because we don't dress the way they do because we don't go to the places they go we can stand confidently and tell them man i don't do these things i know the lord i believe in god i walk in his ways walk in step with the spirit and the bible says you shall not gratify the desires of the sinful nature hallelujah the spirit of god is able to give us boldness and courage the spirit of god is able to give us utterance he is able to give us words to say the same peter who did not know what to say when people said he was with the lord when the spirit of god came upon him he had words the guy could speak actually after this experience the man just never kept quiet wherever he went whatever he was confronted with he had a response he had an answer and a godly answer and so i wish to let us know that wherever you will be out there in the marketplace when you have the spirit of god you will not forget that you are a christian because the spirit of god will quicken into your spirit your faith and your love for the lord and he will give you words to tell those who question your way of life and you will have a response and a godly response even at home where you live with your spouse when he comes and annoys you when she comes and does what you did not expect you will not throw words praise the name of the lord because the reason there is such a tug of war in our families is because we love throwing words we just throw words you are angry you throw words But I wish to let you know people that if we were filled by the spirit of God if we were to walk in step by the spirit you know what it means to walk in step it means that you are not ahead of the spirit hallelujah it means you are not behind the spirit you are walking in step so you will not speak before the spirit tells you to speak praise the name of the lord it does not matter how angry you will be you will not say a word if the spirit has not told you to say hallelujah and do you know how many troubles you will save yourself and save the world if only we could discover the power of the holy ghost and this day of pentecost the lord is inviting us to have this experience the spirit gives us words to speak in different situations like he did to peter the spirit of god reveals to us the things of god the words that peter spoke and all the things he did thereafter he was a man walking in step with the spirit of god and he could only do things you know he's the guy who meets a lame guy at the entrance of the temple and because he's a man who has seen heaven you know i love the scripture that jesus says that what my father does in heaven i see what my father does in heaven and i do it on earth it is the spirit of god that reveals to us what is being done in heaven and we always pray this prayer including this morning your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven your kingdom come the truth of the matter is that will will be done in us and through us because we are walking in the spirit and we hear what is being said in heaven we see what is happening in heaven and we come and communicate it on earth today the things we talk about is politics i love politics by the way those of you who who know i love politics But I have made a decision in my life. I am not emotional about politics. I don't sell it my heart. My heart is with Christ. Hallelujah. I don't give politics my heart. I may be happy with the decision that was made. I may not appreciate another decision was made, but I do not give it my heart. And that's the difference it makes. The reason people after elections take pangas and everything else and go out and kill 
is because they have sold their hearts to politics and to the politicians they follow instead of selling their hearts to the Lord. The Lord is inviting us to be filled with the Spirit of God so that he can reveal the things of God. So that even as the church, right now we are going through so much as a church. And sadly, we don't have any voice of God. We don't have prophecy in church. We don't have workings of miracles. And I will tell you why. It is because we, in our human nature, have limited what God can do. Praise the name of the Lord. I have listened to many discussions about people talking about the working of the Holy Spirit. And I always get surprised because our mind is so limited to the things of God that we are not ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We are limited in our thinking. Yes, the Bible says that God gives gifts, different gifts to men. The Bible that I read tells me about a guy called Peter. He was a preacher. He was laying hands on the sick and making them well. He was raising the dead like he prayed for Dorcas and she came back to life. I mean, he was operating in all spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. So there is no reason all of us cannot operate in all spiritual gifts. Do you know how the Spirit of God gives gifts? He gives gifts according to need. If there is need for healing, and you are a believer and you are available, the Lord will equip you with a gift of healing because healing is needed. And you will pray for the sick so that they can get well. Praise the name of the Lord. And when the Lord needs a word of prophecy, he will anoint you with a prophetic message so that you can go and prophesy to a people that need to hear the voice of God. So indeed it is true that the Lord gives his gifts differently to different people. But according to the word of God, he gives according to need. What is needed here? That is what he shall provide. It is not who had the gift of healing. And because he is the only one who is available, prophecy is not going to happen. If prophecy is needed, the Lord will pour out his prophets so that we can prophesy. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Lord works with need. He doesn't work with what we think we know. Hallelujah. I want to encourage somebody here and to challenge us to be ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit so that we can walk in step with the spirit and that all of us how I pray and desire that all believers would actually believe that it is possible for the spirit of God to be poured out today so that all of us can walk in step with the spirit and we can stop apportioning spirituality to some people you know some of us apportion spirituality to elders and the minister and we leave ourselves to live our careless life so that the elders and minister can pray for us. The Lord has invited each one of us as a believer to walk in step by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And if we walk in step with the Spirit, we shall not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And that's what I wish to conclude very quickly with. Because we read in the book of Galatians and we also read in the book of in the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. I am not going to read all those scriptures. But I just very quickly want to point, to point out. The Bible says explicitly. That the working of the flesh is evident. And it lists for us everything that is of the flesh. Mambo ya mwili ni dahiri. Inajulikana wazi. And the Bible says sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkardness, orgies, and the like. And first, uh, and Second Timothy talks about the same thing in chapter 3. It says there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Do you know such people? Who are lovers of themselves? I know a few. Money is good. It is the one we have used to build this church. If we didn't have money, we wouldn't be here. So let's pray to the Lord to give us money. Money is good and useful. But don't be a lover of money. Because the love of money is what makes you kill. 
It is what makes you hate somebody who has it or do all those other things. So the Bible does not say money. It says lovers of money. People who cannot even give faithfully in church because they want to keep a lot more of it, like Ananias. You know, Ananias had so much money, but he loved it and he lost his life. When the Lord gives you money, spend it for him in everything that you do and he will bless you. Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. I know a few young people like that who are disobedient to their parents. People who are ungrateful, you must have met a few people like that. Unholy, without love, unforgiving. Do you know a few people like that? People who are completely unforgiving. They will never forget what you did. People who are unforgiving. I know a few people. Slanderless, even in church. They are waiting to hear something about you. And the whole nation will know. And they will even add a lot of salt to what was said. Slanderless. Without self-control, anything goes. Anything happens. They have no self-control. Brutal. Not lovers of the good. Trickellers. People who can con you very quickly in the name of the Lord. They come singing about Jesus, but they wish to take what you have. Rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure. I know quite a number. Rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. Praise the name of the Lord. I know in our experiences in life, we have had our own opportunities to manifest flesh where we live. When you look at your own life, there are things you can tell. Hapa nilifanya namwili. This is flesh. But the Bible tells us, if we walk in step with the Spirit of God, we will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Are you out here and you feel jailed? There are habits, there are things you do and you just can't get out of it. Whatever it is, the Lord invites us on this day of Pentecost to be filled with his spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with with the Holy Spirit. Why can be many things? Do not be drunk with yourself if you are a lover of yourself. Do not be drunk with money if you are a lover of money. Do not be drunk with your pride so that in your family living, your spouse cannot have comfort and peace because you occupy the whole space. And whatever you say and whatever you want must go, whether your spouse likes it or not. Do not be drunk with yourself. Do not be drunk with any worldly things. Do not be drunk by the lust of the flesh. Let us be filled with the Spirit of God. Let us walk in step with the Spirit. Let us stand to our feet. One reason we have many challenges in society is because ukitoka kule nje hata hapa kanisani utaona watu wengi wako na mfano wa kiungu lakini wamedharau na wamekataa nguvu za Mungu One thing I discovered is that many people, especially in Kenya, have an English name. Very many people, they have an English name. Unfortunately, in our religious teachings, we have taught people that if they have an English name, they are baptized. So people can take English names, claim they are baptized, but live carelessly out there because they actually do not know the Lord. 
In fact, today it is very possible. Some of us have children who have not been brought for baptism, but we call them by their English names. So for some reason, we taught the world that an English name means baptism and it means you are a Christian. But that is not true. We become Christians by believing in Christ and walking in step by the Spirit. Because it is after this Pentecost experience that people were called Christians in Antioch. They were not called Christians because their name was Peter, John, and James. Praise the name of the Lord. You can be sure there were many other Peters, Johns, and James in that time. But they were not called Christians. It was these particular ones who were walking in the Spirit and doing the things of God that were called Christians. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are in your Christian life. But I wish to allow you a moment to welcome the Lord and tell, them, and tell him, I wish to have my personal Pentecost moment. Praise the name of the Lord. Just open your mouth right now. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord in your own heart. Tell him, I would love my own personal Pentecost moment. I don't want to continue reading history. I don't want to think that Christianity is something that was happening in the book of Acts. Pray to the Lord this morning and tell him, I want this experience for me. I want this Pentecost to be real for me. I want to walk in spirit so that I don't continue to gratify the desires of my sinful nature. I want to walk in the spirit. I desire to be filled with your Holy Spirit. I desire to experience the working of miracles in my life. I desire to speak in new tongues because Father and King, that is your promise for all generations. You spoke to the prophet Joel and you say that Lord, this is your promise to generations to come. And we are the people who gather in this church we call ourselves Christians. We believe in you, O oh God. We desire our own Pentecost moment, O oh God. Pour out your Holy Spirit among us. In this day and age, O oh God, cause us to believe that you can do more than we can ask or imagine according to your power that is at work in us. Cause us to believe, O oh God. We have walked in doubt. We have walked in fear. Do not believe that, God, you can use us. Lord, we don't even want you to use us. We are afraid of our own capabilities. We are afraid that the Spirit may lead us to do things of God. And we are scared of being available for the Lord. But this morning, oh God, we wish to surrender to you. We desire a Pentecost moment for ourselves so that we can proclaim the power of God, so that we can do the things of God, so that we can walk in the Spirit. We can walk in the miraculous. We can walk in the word of the Lord because this Lord is our promise that you gave through prophet Joel. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Pour out your Spirit upon us. Some of us, Lord, are bound by the sinful nature. They are bound, O oh God, in their drunkenness, in sexual immorality, in their hatreds for their brothers. They hate their spouses. They hate their parents. They hate one another, O oh God. We are walking in the flesh. But today, Father and King, we desire a Pentecost moment, O oh God, so that we are delivered from the flesh, O oh God. That we can walk in step with the Spirit. In the name of the Lord. Some of us, Lord, do not know you as Lord and Savior. On this day of Pentecost, Lord Jesus, pour out your Holy Spirit upon our flesh. Let us prophesy, O oh God. Let us see visions. Let us dream dreams. Let us see heaven and communicate the things of heaven to the glory of your name. Father, we thank you and we praise you. If you are out there and you would wish to say, I do not know the Lord. We have like less than a minute. And you want to say, I do not know the Lord. I wish to know the Lord. I wish to experience God in my life. I have no idea who this Holy Spirit is. But I pray for a Pentecost moment of my own. 
If you are there, you're not born again, you wish to say, Lord, come into my heart, come into my life, save me and change me. I would love to experience the power of God. I don't want to continue walking, denying the power, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. I want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Are you out there? You wish to surrender your life to Christ. You can either walk to the front, you can either lift up your hand wherever you are, and we can trust God with you this morning. On this day of Pentecost, the Lord is still available. The Spirit of God is in our midst to change our lives and change the circumstances in which we live because He's available and He's able. Father, we praise You. We give You glory. We thank You for Your Word. We thank You, Lord, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So many of us, Lord, would want to walk in step with the Spirit. We would want, Lord, to walk in the miraculous because, Father, in our homes, we have people who are sick. And it is our prayer that, Lord, you touch them and make them well. There are people that we know and love who are in hospital, oh God. And we wish to see them made whole. And we pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, we walk in step with your spirit, that they be healed. We pray for the healing of our relationships, oh God. Our spouse relationships, our parent-children relationships, our brother-sister relationships, oh God. We pray that they be healed so that we can love one another. We can embrace each other. We pray for our relationships in the church. That, Father, we can have fellowship with one another. There are people who are uncomfortable fellowshipping with one another. Father, forgive us for walking in the flesh. And now help us to walk in the spirit so that we can love one another. And we can have fellowship. Father, we confess the sin of this nation. The sin of corruption. And all the things we have read that are manifestation of the flesh. Father, forgive this nation and fill the people of this land with your Holy Spirit so that we can walk in step with the Spirit. We give you thanks and praise. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, O oh God. Let's experience Pentecost in our own way. We give you praise and glory and we pray humbly believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Bless you. Walking in step with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, because there are so many benefits. The 23rd General Assembly, they give careful thoughts to your ways. If we give careful thoughts to our ways, we'll be able to walk step with the Holy Spirit. May God bless you so much. We have come to the end of this service. Uh, my name is David Wawero. I do have the road as my personal savior. Uh, we want to remind those who, that uh, come to see the elders today that uh, they will be seen at door number one. The further arrangement will be made. We want to welcome our parish minister so that he can give us a benediction. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. Are we happy today? And I thank God that the word of God has come in a very powerful way. A Pentecostal Sunday. We need all of us to desire the infilling of the Holy Spirit that we may receive power, power to manifest the kingdom of God, to do great things. I thank God for the word. It has come to us in a very, very powerful way. Ingeomba tusimame tafadhari na ili tukaweze kumalizia kwa maombi na tupoke baraka yake mwenyezi mungu. Let us pray. Our heavenly king, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are delighted in your presence this morning. We thank you for giving us that opportunity and time that we may gather together in this service. Father Lord, we glorify your name for each and every individual and family that is represented in this hall and in this sanctuary. Father, we pray, may you fill all of us by the power of the Holy Spirit that we may accomplish our purpose in this earth and in the calling that you have called us with. We thank you, mighty Father, for choosing us to be your children 
And it is our prayer that even as we go out there to live our lives, Father, we shall walk in your spirit. Bless us, O God, and continue to do good. We surrender ourselves before you, that even as we start a new week, may you walk with us, O dear Father. May you help us, Jehovah King of glory, by the power of the Holy Spirit to do many, many things that will make many people to know that you are the Lord. We thank you, mighty Father, for calling us. Thank you, Jesus, for you are with us and you will continue to be together with us for this is the promise that you have made to all of us. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Brethren in Christ, I surrender you all in the loving hands of our Lord God Almighty. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May he lay his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give, give you peace. May the power of the Holy Spirit come upon each and every one of you that you may walk closely with the Spirit of God to accomplish His will and purpose and that you may make many, many people to see Christ in you. May the blessings of God Almighty Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and the peace of God that surpasses human understanding be upon you now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Angalia tulipotoka tulipotoka mbali umetuzingi la pande zote kono wako umetutoa mahali si salama wewe ndiwe mu